say zero evidence of heaven and hell? Yeah. It, no, no, that's you say there's no evidence of. Uh, uh, yeah, well. There's not evidence. Show it to me. I, Where's hell? Can I give it to you? No. Can I give you the evidence? Nowhere. Can I give you the evidence? I live with you guys. I was raised like that. You're raised like what? You're raised like what? I got both. Uh, okay, you're raised in a Christian home? No evidence whatsoever. You're raised in a Christian home? Tell me about that. The, the evidence is that for centuries, wicked people, wicked men have tried to destroy this book. They banned it. They burned it. That's not evidence. Yeah, oh yeah, it is. Because if this wasn't inspired by God, this book would have been long gone. There have been wicked people for 2,000 years that have tried to destroy this book, that have banned it, burned it, outlawed it. In fact, this book is illegal in many countries, many communist countries. The fact that this Bible has served, this book has survived today is evidence that it's supernatural in origin, that God wrote it. Because otherwise it had been long gone. The communists would have long destroyed it, many years ago. How many of you grew up in Christian homes? How many of you prayed that prayer, made that decision for Jesus, accepted Jesus in your heart, got dunked in water? How many of you would say that you are even a Christian? Do you know what a Christian is? Do you know what it means to be born again? Do you know what the gospel is? What the, what the Bible says the gospel is? Well, you see, the problem is God blesses America with children, and then we turn around and take the, those blessings to Planned Parenthood and hire a, a serial killer to murder those, those blessings. You see, the Bible says that children are a gift from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of arrows of children. You say, God bless America, and then you turn around and take your blessings to Planned Parenthood. And then you turn around and, and take the pills and murder your blessings and flush the image of God down the toilet. Oh, folks, don't trust in your heart today because your heart is deceitful and desperately sick. The Bible says, who can know it? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. And now going in the Bible to the book of Daniel, this is another warning about pride, what pride does to people. Let's go in the Bible to the book of Daniel. There are a couple of examples in the book of Daniel of, prior, of proud kings. The first one is King Nebuchadnezzar. You see, King Nebuchadnezzar, he refused to give God the glory. And what did God do to King Nebuchadnezzar? God literally turned King Nebuchadnezzar into a beast for seven years. He humbled him, and King Nebuchadnezzar repented of his pride, of his arrogance. And King Nebuchadnezzar said this in Daniel chapter 4. He said, Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise, exalt, and honor the King of heaven, for all his works are true, and his ways just, and is able to humble those who walk in pride. That's what King Nebuchadnezzar said after God humbled him. He was proud and God humbled him. And he said that he is able to humble those who walk in pride. Now King Nebuchadnezzar's son Belshazzar, he wasn't as fortunate. Belshazzar, he blasphemed God and God killed him. God destroyed him. He, he would not repent of his pride and God killed him. Do not let your pride take your life and lead you straight to hell. So many people in the Bible whose pride destroyed them. So many people in the Bible that live for pleasure, that live for the temporal things of this world, just like the godless man Esau. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, do not be like that godless and moral person Esau who sold his own birthright for a single meal. Do not be like Demas who loved this present world and deserted Paul. Do not be like Judas Iscariot who betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ for 30 pieces of silver. 
and then re re regretted what he did, threw away the pieces of silver, and then went away and hanged himself. All those people are rotting in hell right now. Do not, do not look for the passing pleasures of sin that Demas lived for, that Judas Iscariot lived for, that Esau lived for. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ said. Do not love the world, nor anything in the world. For if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. The world is passing away, and also its lust. But the one who does the will of God lives forever. The Bible says that the wicked and the haughtiness of his countenance does not seek him. All his thoughts are, there is no God. The Bible says that the wicked plots against the righteous and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees his day is coming. Oh, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, Better to listen to the rebuke of a wise man than for one to listen to the song of fools. The Bible says that the mind of the fool is in the house of pleasure. The Bible says that the laughter of the fool is futility. It's all futility that you're living for. All the Bible says that the one who sows iniquity will reap vanity. Second Peter chapter 2, that they speak out arrogant words of vanity. They entice by fleshly desires, by sensuality, those who barely escape from the ones who live in error, promising them freedom while they themselves are slaves of corruption. It has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to its own vomit, and a sow after washing returns to wallowing in the mire. Oh, we're warning you in love today, folks. We don't want any one of you to die and go to hell. Your whistles really don't mean anything. Is that, is that really your only argument? Oh, there we go. There's a, there's a great argument. There's a great argument. Get more screaming there. That's a great argument. That's a great argument right there. Okay. Yeah, that's a great argument. This is good homeschooling here for, for, for little ones. This is the argument of people who have no argument. Great, this is an awesome argument. I'm convinced. This is a great argument. This is a great defense for your worldview. That's a great argument. I'm impressed. That's a great argument to scream and make noises and blow whistles. Wow. I, I think I'm convinced. Oh, there, there's another great argument. Middle finger. Oh, you must be the, uh, the coward with, uh, without an arm. Yeah, there we go. Great arguments. No, I said coward. Coward. A pervert without an arm. You see, this is the bankrupt worldview of, of, of those who embrace communism, those who embrace Satanism. They have no argument. <laughs> no argument. You see, you stand upon sinking sand. That's why you, you cannot give a defense of a worldview. We stand upon Jesus Christ, the firm foundation that is Christ crucified. We preach Christ crucified to Jews the stumbling block, to Gentiles foolishness. There we go, get some more screaming in there. Get some more whistles. This is, this is a great argument here. Great defense of the worldview, right? You see, this is what happens when you, when you embrace Darwinian evolution and Marxism. When you believe that you evolved from slime and from stardust. But you see, you're proving the Bible to be true right now. Do you know that? Your foolishness is proving the Bible is true. As the Bible says, 
the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. It's foolishness to you. So I thank you. Thank you all for proving the Bible is true. Thank you all for proving that the Bible is true. Thank you so much. The Bible says that the natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them, because they are spiritually appraised. You're proving the Bible is true. Oh, the Bible says again, I'll give, i say it again, Psalm 37, verses 12 and 13. The wicked plots against the righteous and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees his day is coming. The Lord laughs at you right now. And you see, according to the Bible in John chapter 3, the Lord Jesus Christ said that the one who does not believe the Son, that the wrath of God abides on him. Right now you have the wrath of God abiding on you. You're already condemned under God's wrath. And that's frightening. That is frightening. We're not here to condemn you. You're actually already condemned under God's wrath. And we point you to Jesus Christ, the only Savior from sin. There's no other, there's no other Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Yes, this is what happens when people have no defense for their worldview. They use silly noises, whistles, they bark like dogs, they howl like wolves. But you see, we serve a mighty God who saves sinners from hell. There we go, another, another fool barking like a dog. There we go. Thank you for proving the Bible is true. Thank you for proving the Bible is true. Thank you. All the Bible says in second. Timothy chapter 3, in the last days, difficult times will come, for men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving. They will be haters of good, brutal, reckless, without self-control, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. That's what you are today, folks. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And again, the Bible says that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 5, Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade men. We are ambassadors of Christ, as though God were making an appeal to us. We beg you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. We beg you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. First Corinthians chapter 15, the Bible says, the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is a firm foundation, the only firm foundation that exists. But you stand in sinking sand, and one day your head will go below the surface of the sand. Thank you for proving the Bible is true again. Thank you. Romans chapter 1, they suppress the truth and unrighteousness, and they are without excuse. Professing to be wise, they became fools. <laughs> I 
I'd love for love and tolerance for you. <laughs> love and tolerance. <laughs> love and tolerance. If you agree with us, if you don't agree with us, then we're going to blow whistles at you and we're going to bark like dogs and howl like wolves. <laughs> and we're going to be good fascists and we're going to give free advertising to the, to the creatures. And, oh, is that another person barking like a dog over there? I want you to know this is good homeschooling for, for children. Because it's like, little Johnny, little Susie, do not grow up to, to become like these fools. His argument is barking like dogs and howling like wolves. And blowing whistles. Because they have no argument. Because they cannot defend the real view. Because they could not reason their way out of a paper bag. Thank you so much for proving the Bible is true, folks. Thank you.